Welcome ladies and gentlemen, I have a, another project to build. This is Panzerkampfwagen 1 Ausführung B, made by Italeri. That's a rebox of a 1976 model kit, but it was a gift by my girlfriend. And so I will build it right away and treat it with the utmost respect, of course. Some of you guys asked me to do longer videos, so now is the opportunity. Please enjoy watching this full build video and consider subscribing to my channel, of course, you're watching Tank Brusher. The first thing I noticed when building this kit was there are no numbers on the sprue. We have to use the sprue map in the manual to find our parts. And that's quite an interesting way of building a model kit. But there are only two sprues involved, so it's a small model kit. It goes together fine. What I'm really impressed by is the fit of the lower and upper hull or the model kit in general. Everything went together without any issues. I had nothing to sand to fit or clean up or cut away so it would go together. And that's quite a quality product from back then. I would guess the mold was upgraded at some point of course. But to summarize the after action report or kit review section of this video, there are issues with the manual. You can build different version of this kit and the manual only shows you one way to do it. So let me fix this for you. But first let's deal with the photo edge parts. I'm not very good in the construction part of the scale modeling, but I like to get into it. So, my first attempt at folding a photo edge exhaust grill without messing it up completely. So far, so good. The edges are folded and now we have to get this round. I have a good selection of millimeter sized drill bits and 5.5 millimeter is a standard size that you can find in every kit. The whole thing is rolled on a rubberized mat and then bent into shape and not too shabby for my skills. Yeah, it fits perfectly and yeah, it doesn't scream kill me right away. So it's a step in the right direction of tackling the construction part of scale modeling. So let's have a look at the turret. Some of these hooks are oversized. It belongs on the back of the turret, not on the rear. And yeah, I had to use some extra thin to get rid of the marks. I've only one book about Panzer 1 and 2. So what you see here is basically a fantasy mixture from a Panzer A Ausführung B in its Africa configuration. We have to adjust it a little bit to get it into good shape. But now let's have a look at the tracks. We get single link track link and this is a new sprue. That was not included in the original configuration from what I've seen on Scalemates so far. But yeah, these small single link tracks are a little bit fiddly. They go together fine, but yeah, at some point we have to take them back off and mount them back on again. And this is where things start to get a little bit fiddly, for me at least. I tried to do my best to get a realistic sack out of it and do a good job on the tracks, but this was my least favorite part in this build. And you can clearly see in the result that I have to practice a little bit more on this step, taking more care. And yes, I looked them up three or four times and still managed to put them on the wrong way around. That's not a huge deal on these kind of tracks, but yeah, a little bit more attention is needed. So now let's retrofit this into a Poland campaign, Panzer 1, by removing this engine cover here, these air intakes, 
were only in the Africa version. The armor plate I removed was never present on none of it. And these track holders on the front I couldn't find in any reference pictures. I think they added them because they missed some of the details on this front glaciers here. There are no rivets when compared to the Dragon one, but I still don't want to build a Warhammer tank here. These are the main adjustments. The other thing is the Nortec light, the convoy marching night marching light. That was present from 1940 on, so for a Poland campaign tank it's a little bit questionable. However, I wanted to get this dark brown on dark grey camo scheme. This is what I associate with a Panzer 1. And if I should ever build the Ausführung A, then I will put this into the Spanish Civil War in three color camo scheme. So that was the result after spraying this tank with AK real colors, the dark grey panzer grey and the brown that goes with it. And I did put a chipping layer underneath it. I got some good advice in the comment section of the last video, so I wanted to try it again, just as a small side project, but it didn't work. I hasted through the painting just to make sure the paint wasn't settling too hard. I was spraying a very thin layer over my usual underpainting and yeah, what I got was far from what I wanted or what I had in mind. So I sprayed over the affected areas and readjusted painting the chips later on. Now let's have a look at the decals. Italeri is supplying four different versions. None of them are in Africa, but one is displaying the insignia of the Polish campaign. And so I went for them just to test it out. But I get still silvering. This was a very smooth, well executed paint job and I'm not gloss coating a model just to put water transfers on. This will not happen. And the decals, they have a thickness around these turret hatches. It's no good at all. But yeah, we deal with it a little bit later. First, let's adjust the Panzer Grey. The absence of a color modulation is owed to me checking out how to deal with chipping fluid and I was hasting through the painting process, so no time to do a well-executed color modulation. I opted for the oils right away, just using some neutral gray and buff to brighten up some of the edges and areas, so I can have both a very controlled color modulation approach and a canvas to lay some of the effects or weathering down later on, on a dark gray surface. And this is a really dark gray. There is not much we can do in terms of weathering. We need something our effects create and contrast on in the first place. I used the oil brushes I got a while ago. And the secret to this is having thinner laid down on the surface and using a good natural hair brush for blending it all together. And to keep continuity with the build process, I went for the stencils next. I cut them myself on my Silhouette Portrait 2 using Aura Mask 810 as a masking material. The turret number 104 I've seen some reference photos where the turret number or the same size of stencil was used all around the tank. So I didn't bother with the small one. It was possible to cut them, but it didn't make too good of a mask. With all the markings applied, it's obvious why these 
science or this kind of marking was only used in the early days of the Poland campaign. This is an advertising sign for every tank hunter company out there. It's really iconic. I like the look of it and I wanted to have this specific camo scheme for my collection. Now into the weathering. I use four different products mainly for the rest of the video. So I showed them now and I won't call them out each time. Now let's start with the tracks. They were painted in dark tracks from Mick and I would like to start the weathering process with a dark oil wash just to get a little bit more contrast in the recesses of the track and this proved to be not necessary completely. Using Kursk soil thinned down with enamel thinner, I went over the straight parts of the track on the inside. You will see this in a moment. This gives a little bit a effect where the track was laying flat on the ground and not digging itself in. And this creates another canvas where we can use the dark wash for the recesses. Onto the lower hull, I started by stippling in some Kursk soil. The surface was moistened again with enamel odorless thinner, of course, and I was not after a mud drowned vehicle again. I was after something you get when you drive a dark car off road on a dirty street. This small white almost white sprinkles everywhere. But the running gear is of course a little bit more dirty. So I started by pulling these effects down, creating an interesting streaking effect first. And since I'm not a highly advanced scale modeler, I tried out something different again. Instead of using the airbrush to get splatter effects or splashes effects, I used a brush and a tweezers for doing it. This went much more controlled in comparison with the airbrush approach and gave me a much better result during the complete weathering process. I went through three iterations of splashing and pulling the splashes down, followed by the cleanup of course, until I got the result I was after. What I did not film was me fiddling the tracks back on. That was a puzzle of about a half day worth of work and the result was questionable. I'm sorry for this. But this is how the tank looks at this stage of the build, giving a nearly perfect platform for the weathering or me learning the weathering, trying out a few new things here. Into the weathering I would like to do the chipping next and I do the chipping here by painting on two color tones, one of a light gray to give some depth and initial contrast and followed by a darker chipping color. It's a dark brown in this case, giving us the effect of the rusted surface underneath. And this technique is very, very old. I can remember my first steps into modeling doing Warhammer about 10 years ago. This was already a very present and often used technique. It works fine, but of course on a larger vehicle it quite takes some time. And another secret behind it is just thinking of continents and islands when painting it, giving it a realistic impression of the distribution of the scratches. I went for a few more because the next step of the weathering will blend down some of it. I start with the rain marks. This effect paint is an enamel product of course, but it leaves the impression of thinned pigments. It creates a very small grainy effect. It doesn't cover as much or it's highly thinned down if you want to call it this way. I started by applying some streaks and I spreaded them out quite a bit. 
this is not a streaking effect right away but yeah it's very similar to streaking and it may look a little bit comic style at this moment because i'm adding a very bright effect on a very dark surface creating a lot of contrast almost forcing this contrast but on the other hand this is how this dark gray camo scheme works you have a camo scheme that is very dark it collects dirt very fast and blends into the environment this is how this thing was thought of when it was designed tanks are kicking off a lot of dust just look at the museum's running day videos on youtube and you will get an impression of what i mean by this to pull the surface together between lower hull and upper hull i added again some sprinkling or splash effects but i did not pull them down in my imagination these splashes are have nothing that pulls on them aside from a few grass or brushes you drive over and yeah it's important to have control over this sprinkling effect and doing it with the pair of tweezers and the brush we have a lot of control i think what i do now is i blend them together the rain marker effects had some very harsh borders and this was just blended down here giving it a much more natural appearance. These fenders are catching a lot of dust and dirt of course, so I used this rain mark effects a little bit more thinned down as a wash or almost as a filter applied over the complete surface on the lower part of the fender, adding again some streaking behind on the mudguard to give it a little bit more room to breathe leaving some of the dark gray exposed and again blending all in avoiding very hard borders or harsh surfaces this is followed by some splashes and i was after some very small sprinkles and splashes and again using the tweezers and the brush with very little paint on it uh, i was able to get some very small effects out of it not huge accumulations and then i went back in and tried to blend it a little bit yeah uh, lost a hook here <laughs> was repaired right away of course and continued with the weathering. The nice side effect of these rain mark effects is it brightens up the surface a lot so we can add a little bit more dirt and dust deposits with a darker color and still the color will be more visible than on the plain dark gray where we could almost have no chance of making out the contrast or the effect and by the way i'm flooding this vehicle with light for doing the video so you see it much clearer in contrast to me sitting in front of it and painting it and another step that was now possible was doing a pin wash on the weld seam this was impossible to spot on the dark gray surface before but with the rain mark effects we got a first really bright wash effect in this areas and we're now able to use some of the darker wash to give it a finished appearance even a pin wash was now possible and you might say um, tank brusher you bonehead there is a finished product for this dark gray for panzer gray or whatever this is a blue wash i don't want to fiddle around with blue tints on a panzer gray in this example because it just won't fit the bill in total and here i'm again splashing on some of the kursk soil to give it a little bit of a splatter effect and remove some of the excess dirt where these splashes were a little bit 
too large. This is where I would like to end this build. There was, other than this, nothing all too new. The exhaust was done with a little bit of oil paint stippled on and I think all in all it was a good result. It was a great result given my skills, my learning curve. I would like to thank you guys for watching, thank you for subscribing and see you guys next time. Happy modeling!